Thank you, Father. In Matthew chapter, go to Matthew chapter 8. I'm going to get into the Word this morning. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 8. We've been talking about making room, and really the last four weeks, this will be the fourth week, I've been talking about this scripture out of Matthew chapter 5. Say, show me your glory. And that was Moses' heart cry for God. How much should it be part of what we cry out for in our lives? For God to continue to reveal himself. I, I believe the Apostle Paul even prayed over you and I, prayed over the church of Ephesus, and he prayed that they would be strengthened with all might. Strength of all might in their inner man. Another place he talks about, he talks about that they would, they would that they open their eyes of their wisdom and their understanding that they would know the hope is calling, to know the, in, the inheritance that they have and to know the exceeding greatness of his power. Amen. So Paul wanted, wanted the church of Ephesus for their eyes to be open yeah. to something, to be expanded. Yes, see, it, it's, you know, you, you may, you know, we taste and see that the Lord is good, but you know what? He, he constantly wants to reveal himself to you. He constantly wants to reveal himself in greater ways to you. It's not just, hey, I, I, I knocked off my belt like, hey, yeah, I accepted Jesus and that's the end of the journey. No, this is, this is, a, this is a lifelong pursuit that the eyes of our, un, our natural understanding, that my natural understanding would be able to grasp. Another place that Paul says to grasp the lengths and the depths and the heights of that love. If, if Paul prayed, prayed that, then that lets me know from the heart of the Father, he wants us to walk in that. That he wants our understanding to be expanded. It's not just about accepting Jesus, but it's accepting him in the now understanding everything that he offers. Everything that he's made available for each one of us. Amen. So when, when Moses said, show me your glory, we're not just going back in the Old Testament and saying, well, Moses said that and, you know, it's not really for us today. No, Paul prayed, let your knowledge be expanded, yeah. be filled. Paul prays in Colossians 1, be filled with the knowledge of his will. So there's this constant understanding that Paul's saying, there's a pursuit after this. It's not, it's not earning it. It's not trying to, if I, just, if I just spend more time praying or more time in the word, then, I, then I, earn, I earn a great, no, being in the word and being in prayer is to allow him to open up himself to you. Yes. Show me your glory. Yeah. Say, show me your glory. Show me. In this scripture in Matthew chapter five, verse eight, it says, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So I was praying over this week, and uh, you know, I said this is the fourth week that, that the Lord's had me minister along these lines. And just the understanding of this, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. So as I kept just thinking about it and just, just meditating on that scripture just by itself, blessed are the pure in heart. I just, just think the pure in heart. They shall see God. So as I got thinking about this, I was thinking that the quality of my heart depends on what I see. That's good. You see, you see, you're going to see what you pour into your heart. Right. See, because it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So what I see is going to be dependent on what's in my heart. So the quality when you talk about something being pure, like pure gold or pure silver or pure, you know, we talk about diamonds and clarity and everything being, with no imperfections in it. And so here it says, the pure in heart, they shall see God. So the quality of my heart depends on how much of God I see in my life. Now, it's not about me being so good that all of a sudden I'm earning salvation. No, but the thing is, is like I said, God wants you to step in a little bit farther. He wants you to go a little bit deeper. He wants, he wants you to go beyond just this Sunday morning experience and embrace everything he has for you. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Rick, at the end of worship, Rick used the scripture out of Romans. And, and so what's, where is faith found? 
in our heart. Faith, Romans chapter 10, verse 8 says, faith is in our heart and it's in our mouth. That's right. Amen. It says, a man believes in his heart mm-hmm. unto, uh, unto salvation and with the mouth confession is made. So it's what's in my heart. What, what is the quality of my heart? What's in your heart? And this morning I want to talk about our hearts being full of faith. Full, hearts being full of faith, because that's where, that's where faith is. Faith is in our hearts. You know, we, we saw this last week, you know, we talked about Stephen. Stephen, it was talking about Stephen, and it, and it labeled him. And, and I talked about how you are known by what you pursue. And, and, and so Stephen was known, it said he was known as a man full of the Holy Spirit, and he was a man known as full of faith. Man full of the Holy Spirit and a man full of faith. In Barnabas, in Acts chapter 11, it says that this, he was known for this. It says he was a good man. It said that he was full of the Holy Spirit and he was full of faith. Paul talks of the faith of Abraham and says that Abraham was fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. That means his heart was fully persuaded that whatever God promised he was able also to perform. So Abraham got to a place where he was fully persuaded. That sounds like if if faith is in our heart, it sounds like Abraham got to a place where his heart was pure as in faith. Why why is it so important with this aspect of our heart being full of faith? Let's go to James chapter 3. James chapter 3. And I want to show you a principle Thank you, Father. A pure heart is a heart full of faith. Thank you, Father. James chapter 3. Let's look at verse 10. Out of the same mouth, I'm reading the Amplified. It says, out of the same mouth comes forth blessing. Now, now let me just regress just for a moment. Where is faith? In your heart. And in your mouth. So here it tells us out of the same mouth comes forth blessing. So if, if, if something comes out of the mouth, that means it must have been what was in the heart. Okay? Out of the same mouth comes forth blessing and cursings. These things, my brethren, ought not to be so. So you have blessings and cursings. These things, meaning, meaning you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have blessings and cursings, cursings coming out of the same heart. Verse 10, does a fountain send forth at the same time from the same opening fresh water and bitter water? I mean, can, can a fountain release bitter water? It's like, well, you wait, wait a minute, I, I want to have, Kenny, I want bitter water today. And then the next day, go to the same fountain and say, say, Kenny, I want sweet water today. You can't because the fountain can only produce what it's full of. Verse 12, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Man, that'd be a miracle. You plant a fig tree and you get olives? It says, or can a grapevine produce figs? Neither can salt spring furnish fresh water. Meaning what happens is is the, the, the grapevine, the olive tree, it can only produce what it is. It can only produce what it's made of. It can only produce what's at the core of what it was created to be. Hallelujah. Verse 13, who is there among you who is wise and intelligent? Then let him by his noble living show forth his good works with unobtrusive humility, which is a proper attribute of true wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and envy and contention in your hearts, do not pride yourselves on it and thus be in defiance and false to the truth. So he's talking about jealousy here. If you have jealousy in your heart. Verse 15. This wisdom is not such as comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, even devilish. For where there is jealousy, remember, where's jealousy? It was in the heart. In contention, there will also be confusion. So I'm letting you in on a principle here, because we're talking about faith. But the, what I want you to see is I'm not going to deal with strife this morning. Although if you're at strife with someone, you, you, you need to, get, you need to get, it, get, it, get over it. I mean, you need, to, you need to heal it. You need to bring, because it says there's confusion there. So, so here, if I've got, a lot of times we have so much mixture in our lives. 
And our hearts can be filled with so many things. And it says, and it says you, you can't have bitter water and sweet water flow out of the same thing. It can't, it can't happen. Right. But he says if jealousy is in the heart, it says there's confusion in every evil work. How about our lives can be sometimes filled from the standpoint where we can, we can have aspects of faith, but we have just as much aspects of fear. We have, we have things that, that, that are, are constantly trying to pollute our heart, so to speak. Fear, maybe, maybe offense, unforgiven, different things. But, but, but what happened is always eat, it's always the eat, eating away at your faith because, because where jealousy and contention is, there's, ever, there's confusion. And so what happens is a lot of times as believers, we, we allow so many things to enter into our hearts, it produces confusion in our lives. And if, you're, if you have confusion in your life, it's hard to see or hear what God really wants to do in your life. We have so many outside influences from the media, from, from perspective to, to, to science, to education. So many things trying to pour into our hearts. And the thing is, is we let it. And what happens is it breeds confusion and therefore our lives never really go anywhere because we had a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. And we wonder why we were kind of sometimes in a place of confusion. Sometimes things are going well. Sometimes things aren't going so well. Sometimes things are going great because there's this mixture of, 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 of stuff, this mixture of life. See, faith is in your heart, in your mouth. But what else is in your heart? Because it's whatever's in your heart is what's going to come out of your heart. So as we deal with it, blessed are the pure in heart. I want to talk about getting to a place where we're full of faith. Full of faith means there's, there's nothing else. It's not, it's not like just this much of faith and then this much of fear. No, no getting to a place where we're full of faith. I, you, know, you know, I would love to say that I'm there. I would love to say that I'm arrived and you know what, I've already walked on water and I've already translated and, you know, you know, I've already raised people from the dead. I would love to be able to say that. So, so as I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me because, because I don't want any hindrances in what God wants to do through my life. And I don't want, you know, because, it, because my life is not about me. My life is not about me. You know, I, I like what they, uh, someone asked uh, Jim Elliott's wife, and they, they asked him, said, well, how does it feel to know that your husband was killed in the, in the jungle, you know, in, in South, South America? And, and, and she says, he didn't die in the jungle in South America. It said he died when he, was, when he was 14 years old on the side of his bed praying to send me to the nations. So my life is not about me. So the thing is, is I want to get to a place where I'm full of faith that, that when we have situations in here or we hear things that happen like with Kevin and Penny, that we can go to that hospital and raise someone up and, and speak life into them to, 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 to see the dead raised, to see bodies healed, to see the manifested presence of God. So, so I want to grow on the inside. How about you? Because it says, blessed are the pure in heart for they'll see God. I want to see God manifest through my life. I want to have the right word at the right time that totally calms someone down. And, and then make them God conscious just for a moment to where, you know what? I, I, I want him. I want him in my life. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. I want someone to see God through my life. How about you? Hallelujah. I want someone to see God through my life. There's this connection, I believe, with faith and glory. Go to John chapter 11. Faith, I'm going to make this statement. I'm going to go show you a couple of scriptures here in a moment that, quali that you can see it. Faith is what purifies your heart. And I want to qualify that statement here in just a moment, but I want to read this scripture first. John chapter 11. Say, thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. We are a word church. <laughs> word of faith church. People ask all the time, well, what kind of church are you? We're a spirit-filled church. We're a grace church. We're a forgiving church. We're a love church. We're, we're, it's whatever you see in the word that Jesus talks about, that's what we're endeavoring to be. Amen? Amen. 
John chapter 11, verse 40. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Now get that. If you would believe, you would see the glory of God. Martha, if you had believed, you'd see the glory of God. I believe when we believe, we will see the glory of God. Amen. Kenny, I believe we will see the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe Go Ministry, Steve Munns, you're going to see the glory of God. Amen. I believe. Jesus is talking to her, and he said, if you had believed, I'd see, you would have seen. Meaning there was a connection to what she believed to what she was going to see. And so I want to put that in our courts. There's a connection from what you believe to what you're going to see. And so, so we, need to be on, we need to guard our hearts on fear. Fear, fear is so subtle. You know, we, we don't know all that was in her heart that day. It was fear. Maybe it was regret. We know part of it was anger because she went to Jesus and said, if you had only been here, things would have been different. I mean, we, we know there were some things in her heart, but it was like she got to a place where I can't believe. I can't believe. Don't ever get to a place where you say, I can't believe. Believing is a choice. Okay, I choose to believe, even though my, my mind is yelling at me, even though that the, the enemy wants to bring all sorts of fear, all sorts of condemnation. I'm telling you, that's where you have to get to a place where you just say, I still believe. I like what Kenneth Hagin says, that, that I can believe God in my heart with doubt in my head. The enemy coming and talking to you about this or this report or, or this sign or this symptom and, and talk to you about different things like, I choose to believe. I choose to believe. I choose to believe. Well, you say, well, what if you, what if you die? Well, well, you're going to die in faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It, it, do, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the fact of where you're going or where you're headed. The thing is, is we have to be at a place where we, get, where we have no room, no room for doubt. Yeah. No room in our heart. Like I said, the enemy's going to come and you're going to have thoughts. You're going to have, so this is not to bring condemnation. Well, I can never get to a place where I'm full of faith. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Hallelujah. And it's a, it's a, we, it says we grow from glory to glory and faith to faith. Man, we're all on this journey together. This is a, this is a journey we're on to, to grow in faith so we can see greater glory. Why do we grow from faith to faith? Because what? We're going to see greater glory. We're going to see greater glory. Because Jesus said, I believe. If you had believed, you'd see the glory of God. Faith is what purifies your heart. Hallelujah. Faith can purify your heart and faith can renew your mind. Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Like what the Passion says in John chapter 11, it says, if you had believed, you would, see, you would have seen the unveiled power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you had believed, you would, you would have seen the unveiled power of God. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 15. Thank you. Verse 8. And here in this chapter, just to kind of just set kind of what's going on here, you had a lot of the people in Jerusalem and you had some other people that established things and now you had the Jews that were now Christians and you had the Gentiles that were Christians and you had the Jews that didn't like a lot of things that the Gentile Christians were doing and so there was a lot of confusion so they took things to, to like you know the big daddies the, the, the apostles, the James the, the ones that would like establish the church in Jerusalem and so they had this council and they're talking about things but I want to bring out the scripture in verse 8 it says and God who acquainted God who is acquainted with and understands the heart say understands the heart Hallelujah. Bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit as he also did to us. So here they're trying to say, hey, God, God showed up in their life, you know, and he gave them the Holy Spirit just like you. Hallelujah. Verse nine. And he made no difference between us and them, 
purifying their hearts by faith. Say that, purifying Purifying. their hearts by faith. The contemporary English version says, God treated them the same way he treated us. They put their faith in him and he made their hearts pure. Hallelujah. Man, they put their trust in him and God made their hearts pure. Hallelujah. Faith is what purifies your hearts, not your works. Let me say that again. Faith is what purifies your hearts, not your works. You can never do enough to earn salvation. Hallelujah. You can never pay God enough to earn salvation. You can never pray long enough. You can never take communion enough. You can never fast enough. But faith. Faith brings God into the moment. Faith brings God into your moment. Faith brings God right into your situation. Faith brings God right on the scene. Let's go to Hebrews chapter, 11, Hebrews chapter 10. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. Thank you, Father. Let me, let me get this. Thank you, Jesus. I want to read this in the Passion Translation. Thank you, Father. Actually, I won't read the Amplified first, and then I'm going to switch over to this. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10. In accordance, Hebrews 10.10, 10, and in accordance with his will, we have been made holy. Thank you, Father. Consecrated and sanctified through the offering made once and for all, the body of Jesus Christ. Furthermore, every human priest stands at the altar of service, ministering daily, offering the same sacrifices over and over again, which never are able to strip and take them away. Verse 12, whereas this one Christ, after he had offered a single sacrifice for our sins that shall avail for all time, he sat down at the right hand of God, then to wait until his enemies should be made a footstool beneath his feet. For by a single offering, say a single offering, He has forever and completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated and made holy. And also the Holy Spirit adds to his testimony to us in confirmation of this for having said, this is the agreement that I will set up and conclude with them after those days, says the Lord, that I will imprint my laws upon their hearts and I will inscribe them on their minds. Verse 17, he then goes on to say, and their sins and their law breaking, I will remember no more. Hallelujah. That's something to shout about, isn't it? Hallelujah. 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 Verse 18 says, Now where there is absolute remission, forgiveness, cancellation of the penalty of these sins and lawbreaking, there is no longer an offering made to atone for sin. Meaning, because Jesus already came, there's not another sacrifice that can bring salvation. There's only been one, and it's Jesus. Meaning, meaning it's going to come down to your faith and believing what he's done, not doing another sacrifice. Right? It's once and for all, Jesus sat down. Meaning he was finished once and for all, and he sat down. And that every sin, every sin has been forgiven. Hallelujah. Every sin. You know, look at your neighbor and say, I am forgiven because of my faith. Hallelujah. You see, you, you, the only way you could get saved was by faith. Faith is what? In your heart and your mouth. Believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and salvation comes. So, so the only way you could be saved was through faith. So don't tell me you don't have faith because you have faith. Hallelujah. And it says that, that if we have faith, we will see God. Hallelujah. Stop allowing the enemy to constantly put things on you that you weren't meant to carry. And stop feeding yourself things that you're not meant to receive. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look at verse uh, 19. I'm going to read this in the Passion. It says, And now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. Wow. 
Man, we're brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. And he welcomes us to come right into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm. Man, because of the blood of Jesus, I come right into his presence. Man, I want this place to be such a place of freedom that when you come here, you know that you're going to experience God. Amen. I want you to get to a place in your own, own walk with God that when you're in the car, you realize that you have access to God because of, of what Jesus did. Hallelujah. And now we are brothers and sisters in God's family because of the blood of Jesus. And he welcomes us to come right into the most holy sanctuary in the heavenly realm boldly and with no hesitation. No hesitation. Hallelujah. See, a lot of times, you know, you're not going to see his best if there's hesitation in your heart. You got I'm talking about just you just uh, totally abandoned to know that you're forgiven. Totally abandoned that you have a call, that you have a purpose. And nothing's going to hold you back from that call or that purpose because you've been made righteous by Jesus. Hallelujah. Having faith. Having faith. Hallelujah. For he has dedicated a new life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was torn in two, Jesus' body was torn open to give us free and fresh access to him. Now, verse 21, and since we now have a magnificent king priest to welcome us into God's house, we come close to God and we approach him with an open, open heart fully convinced by faith that nothing will keep us at a distance from him for our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove impurity and we have been freed from an, an accusing conscience and now we're clean unstained and presentable to God inside and out hallelujah, hallelujah. man but that's all that's all based on faith it's all based on faith amplified says let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, full assurance of faith. And what happens, what happens in assur uh, assurance of faith? It's your hearts are sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies are washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Lay hold of your faith. Don't let the enemy steal your faith. Hold on to your, it says let us lay hold our profession of our faith. Remember, faith is in my heart and in my mouth. That's my profession. So let me hold of the things that are in my heart and the things I'm speaking out of my mouth. Let me lay hold of it, full assurance of faith, being full of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> full of faith. Let's go to Hebrews 11. And let's see what this looks like. And then I'm going to bring it into our life. Let's see what this looks like. Hebrews 11, verse 24. Talking to Moses. And it says, by faith, Moses. How was it? By faith. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. See, there's some things that you need to be refused to be called. There, there's some things that you need to refuse to be called because you're not that anymore. You need, when, people, when people call you that, don't even answer. When the enemy, the enemy speaks, speaks to you that, you need, he, he said he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So what does Pharaoh represent? He represents the, the king of God's system. I mean, the king of the world system, sorry. The king of the world, the ruler of the world system. And who's the, who's the ruler of this world system? 2 Corinthians 4, 4 tells us the God of this world. Satan is the God of this world. So here, he said he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. See, there's some things and areas of your life you need to get fed up with. There's some things in your life you need to get fed up with. The enemy keeps bringing up to you, devaluing you, calling you this. And, call, and what happens is the enemy plants the thought and plants it in the heart. And the next thing you know, it's meditated on. And the next thing you know, you take hold of it and you say, well, this is what I am. 
And then next thing you know, it starts changing your character. It starts changing your nature that you were never meant to be. And so what happens is you have to refuse to be called what the enemy calls you. By faith, Moses, when he had come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Mm. Hallelujah. Man, we're, we're forgiven. But there's this element where the enemy wants you to still choose the old way. And he tells us this. It says, it only has pleasure for a season. Choosing. See, it's a choice. Choosing. What, what are you going to allow in your heart? What are you going to allow the enemy to call you? Or what are you going to receive what God called you? Verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Esteeming. That's valuing. Valuing the reproach of Christ. I mean, this is interesting that Moses has faith in something that hadn't happened yet. By faith, Moses. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. What would he know about Christ? Because he knew about the Messiah. He, he knew about the Messiah. He even talked about in his writings and numbers and he talked about a star that would come. There's different things. There's a thin lit red line that runs all the way through the Torah, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And Moses is writing about one that he is yet to meet, except in a burning bush. And he says he refuses. And he said, esteeming the reproach of Christ. I mean, I'm valuing the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. Meaning he created this, this is, this is a hard decision. This, this is something that he had to choose. Would you give up all the treasures of Egypt to be on the backside of the desert? Would you? Would you choose that? Would you choose to surrender every aspect of your life to what's not popular? What's not, what's not properly accepted? What's probably not talked about? What, you know, the, the thing is, is, is there is, God says when he comes, Jesus, when he returns, he said he's going to divide the sheep and the goats. There is going to be a division one day. And we have to understand it's what's in our heart. And so here he had to, are you going to esteem the reproach of Christ more than the riches of Egypt? So this is a heart issue. This is a hard issue. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of reward. What does that mean? He valued the fact that there was a payday. That's what recompense is. It's a payday. He, he valued that he knew as I looked to him, as I, he's the one that said, show me your glory. He was, as I looked to him, I'm going to experience payday. When I, I look to him, you know what? The treasures of Egypt are not going to compare with what I see when I see him. Nothing can be compared to what I see when I see him. There's not one thing you can give me in this world that's going to satisfy my heart and my life. By faith, Moses. So when he said, show me your glory, it wasn't just some sort of flippant statement. He was just saying, I'm full of faith. I want to see him. I want to see him. I want to see him. What are you valuing in your life? What are you esteeming in your life? I want my heart, I want my heart to esteem him. So I haven't arrived yet, people, all right? We're on this journey together. I, I, I want to have my, my pursuit being after him. The riches of Christ. The riches of Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The riches of Christ. Say the riches of Christ. He esteemed the riches of Christ. Man, do you know the riches of Christ? Do you know what you've already been given? I could, I could go to a lot of scriptures right now, but... 
Let me, let me just keep it with it, just a couple. Let's, let's go to Romans, Romans 8. The riches of Christ. Valuing the riches of Christ. Just had a song come up in my, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. <laughs> you, you Romans 8. Why, why do I not want to turn back? Why? Moses is steaming the riches of Christ. Romans 8, verse 30, he says, Hallelujah. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, and this scripture is not one in for predestination that God chooses who to save and who he doesn't choose to save. That's not what this scripture is referring to. Because we know in Tim, we know in Peter and Timothy it says, I wish all men to be saved. So it's not choosing this. No, he gave, he gave you and I a will to choose. So whom, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. Whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, he also glorified. Verse 31, what shall we say to this, these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, this is scripture. He that spared not his own son. See, this is the riches of Christ. That I want you to get a hold of one of, the, one of the riches of Christ. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. See, you're, what you're, you're purified by your faith in him, right? Right, we talked about you. You're purified by your faith in Him. Acts, Acts 15 and, and Hebrews 10 told us that. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him freely give us all things? I mean, if, if God didn't spare His best, what would keep Him back from the natural things? What could keep him back from ordinary things? If he freely gave up everything, why would he not just freely give us all things? Amen. See, with the riches of Christ and having your heart filled with faith is laying hold of the things that you've been freely given. Hallelujah. He would freely give us all things. All things. Say all things. All things. Look to your neighbor and say all things. All things. What does all things mean for you? What does all things mean for you personally? Now, if it doesn't line up with the word, it, it, it's not a thing he can give. Amen. Amen. You say, you know, a lot of times people want to choose their destiny instead of discovering their destiny. And it, it's a discovery. It's a discovery. The gifts and talents that God's placed in you aren't, aren't for you. And sometimes we, like, we, want, we want to decide what we're going to do. Instead of saying, Lord, what's, what do you desire me to do? You've given me these gifts. You've given me these talents. How can I use them for your kingdom? It's a whole other message. <laughs> Freely give us all things. Let's go to uh, Philippians 4. And like I said, I could... <laughs> I'm sure you all want to have lunch sometime, so. <laughs> Just two more, two more verses. Philippians 4, verse 19. Familiar scripture. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The riches of Christ. He said he would supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. See, when you're having faith and you're esteeming Christ more than Egypt, what are you doing? You're putting your faith at God shall supply all of my need. What do you need? You need wisdom? Well, that's, he can supply it. You need peace? He can supply it. You need power? He can supply it. Hearts filled with faith. Let's go to Psalms 84, and I'll close with this. Psalms 84.
Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Having hearts filled with faith. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they see God. Blessed are the hearts that are full of faith, for they shall see God. Psalms 84, verse 8. Thank you, Father. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. Hallelujah. And here the, 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 writer, the writer of this is, is talking to us and he's praying and he's, he's saying that God is a, is a shield. He's saying he, he's our shield. And, he, and he's saying, look upon the face of your anointed. Meaning you've anointed me. Look, look at me. I, I want your attention. This, this is the psalmist here. Is, he, this is from a position of faith. This is from a position of a heart overflowing of, of faith pursuing. I'd rather be in your house than anywhere else. Man, that's a heart full of faith. I mean, I'm not going to find a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit up there, a little bit down there. No, no, uh, in your house. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Man, think about it. I would re- just, just put me outside the door. I, I just, I just want to be a greeter. Give a shout to all greeters in the house. He said, if I just could be a greeter, if I was just close to it, man, that's, that's a heart of faith, man. Man, I want to see it. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. Now get this, the Lord will give grace and glory. For the Lord God is a sun and shield and the Lord will give, will give, not might give, but we'll give, we'll give. He will give grace and glory. What is, what is grace? I mean, oh, we'll just, for, for, for just right now, just it's God's empowerment in your life to help you do what you can't do in your own ability. He'll give the empowerment that you need and glory, grace and glory, grace and, he will give grace. Cassie, he's gonna give grace and glory. Ooh, man, Phil and I, he's going to give grace and glory. Yes. Amen. Wow. And no good thing, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O oh Lord of hosts, now get this, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. We're back to faith. Blessed is the man that trusts in thee. So if I, if I read the scriptures like this without taking any, anything away from it, blessed is the man that trusts in thee because the Lord will be a sun and shield to him and the Lord will give grace and glory and no good thing will he walk, withhold from them to walk uprightly. See, when I trust in him, it opens me up to see his grace and to see his glory. Yes. See, blessed is the man that trusts in thee. When I release my faith in him, it sets me up to see his experience, his grace and his glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that it empowers us. It strengthens us. It equips us. It sets us up on high. Thank you, Father, for your word, Father, that has breathed life into us. Thank you, Father, for breathing, breathing into every single one of our hearts this morning. And I thank you for purifying our hearts. I thank you, Lord, that we release our faith in you this morning. We release our faith in you this morning. And as we release our faith in you, I thank you that you are purifying our hearts. You're pushing out the negative. You're pushing out the fear. You're pushing out the pressure. You're pushing out the anxiety. And Father, I thank you that you are a sun and shield. You are a sun and shield to each each one of us. Thank you that you surround each one of us. You, you are equipping each one of us. You're empowering each one of us. I thank you that you are quickening every marriage. You're establishing every heart. Thank you, Father, that you're speaking into our destiny. You're speaking into our character. You're speaking into, into negative behaviors. And I thank you, Father, that you are fine-tuning and perfecting everything that concerns us because that's just who you are. Thank you that you are one that perfects things that concerns us. 
Hallelujah. And we release our faith, Father, in your ability to do a work in us. Thank you, Father, that we esteem the riches of Christ greater than the treasures of Egypt. Thank you, Father, we esteem. We esteem what Christ has done. We release our faith in what Christ has done. Thank you that Christ and what he has done has made us holy. What Christ has done has established and purified our hearts. I thank you, Father, for moving and manifesting in each and every single heart here and watching by way of internet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.